Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Had a whole bunch of people send me the story from Business Insider. One family pocketed $7.6 million by taking cans and bottles from Arizona and recycling them in California, which is fraud. According to prosecutors, Charles Davis wrote this. And you might immediately go, wait, why have I heard of this before? Why have I heard of this before? Well, it's similar to an episode of Seinfeld. So a California family that earned millions of dollars just by recycling cans and bottles has now been accused of multiple felonies that could lead to years behind bars. A felony complaint was filed earlier this month, and state prosecutors charged eight family members in Riverside County with defrauding the state by importing used bottles and cans from Arizona and recycling them in California. It added up to 178 tons, 178 tons in eight months. The recycling operation earned the family $7.6 million, according to a statement from the Office of the California Attorney General. Investigators also found a stash of illegally imported beverage containers worth another million dollars, uh, which I suspect they're going to say they were going to import those next. They were in the pipeline. When someone purchases a plastic or aluminum bottle in California, they typically pay an extra 5 to 10 cents in CRV, which is California Redemption Value. Uh, that's something the consumer can get back by returning the items to one of the state's more than 1,200 recycling centers. Arizona has no such program. So in Michigan, the bottle deposit is 10 cents. 10 cents. You buy a bottle of Coke, 10 cents. Bottle of Pepsi, 10 cents. Then if you want to, you can return the bottle and get your 10 cents back. So most people just stockpile the bottles for a while and then take them back. A lot of stores actually have bottle counting machines, and they'll say, yeah, go, go help yourself. It's a self-serve thing. You walk back to the machine, you start feeding in the bottles. When you're done, you press a button, it spits out a receipt, you take it to the counter and get your money back, or use that money to buy something else. And of course, it became a huge nightmare for the stores when they started doing this. And so when I was a child, they did it, but it wasn't 10 cents a bottle. It was more like two or three cents a bottle. And I remember as a little kid walking towards the store and seeing bottles in the parking lot, just picking them up, walking inside, cashing them in, and suddenly I've got spending money, more than I had before. But they did away with the bottle returns for quite some time, and then they came back. And most states went with three cents or five cents or something substantially less. Michigan said, hey, let's make it 10 cents. Let's make it 10 cents. And of course, they were thinking, because many of the bottles never get returned, that that windfall would go to the state. The state actually gets the unclaimed money after a while. The problem, of course, is that people are more incentivized to return a 10-cent bottle than they are a 5-cent bottle. So the percentage of returns went up, which is a good thing. But the people who designed the law said, oh, darn. <laughs> but of course, that's what led to the episode of Seinfeld, where Kramer is reading a bottle one day and goes, wait a second, what's this 10 cents MI thing? And then someone says, well, that's Michigan's got a 10 cent return. And so Kramer goes, well, wait, if I got this here in New York and I return it to Michigan, I make 10 cents? And somehow Newman gets involved in this and, and they, they, they discuss this at length. It's, it's a major, major plot point in one episode of Seinfeld. And, of course, their plan falls apart because it's Kramer and Newman trying to do something complicated. But as a result of that show airing, there were people trying to do this, and it became a problem. And, of course, the issue is that what you're doing is you're returning something for a refund. But if you didn't spend $0.10 cents on the deposit when you bought this thing, and you brought it in and you go, I want my $0.10 cent refund... Oh, wait, you bought it in another state where you paid a five cent deposit? And of course, a lot of times they do pick the cans and bottles up elsewhere. But for instance, and I forgot what Ohio's uh, bottle return law is, but I know that Ohio and Michigan have a common border. And there were people who got caught gathering up all of their stuff from Ohio, crossing the border into Michigan and cashing it in there. And so Michigan actually passed a specific law as a result of this scheme being tried by people after the Seinfeld episode aired. And I remember them actually busting a few people publicly and saying, look, we passed a law. We're not going to tolerate this. So apparently, not everyone got the memo. <laughs> and here we go. So the attorney general in California said, California's recycling program is funded by consumers and helps protect our environment and our communities. 
Those who try to undermine its integrity through criminal operations will be held accountable. In the criminal complaint, prosecutors accused family members of unlawfully conspiring to commit grand theft and defrauding the California Recycling Program on a chronic and ongoing basis by seeking reimbursement for out-of-state containers and containers that had already been redeemed within California. Felony grand theft in California is punishable by up to three years in prison. Redeeming out-of-state containers to the degree the families accused could increase the sentence by another three years. Court documents did not identify an attorney for the defendants, and of course they have not yet been convicted of anything. So last year, six people were charged in a similar Arizona to California recycling operation that prosecutors said netted more than $10 million by fraudulently redeeming more than nine tons of empty beverage containers. At least 93 people in California were convicted of recycling fraud between 2010 and 2019, according to a report by the nonprofit consumer Watchdog. These weren't the first people to do this. It's just the scale of the operation is shocking. $7.6 million, uh, including 178 tons of bottles and cans. Now, somebody who sent me this story said, Steve, I'm curious, though. Are these people really stealing? Because the money is put in the pot to redeem these cans and bottles. And we know that every single year there's a surplus in that pot because not all the bottles and cans get returned. Well, yes, it's still stealing, though, because the money that's not being redeemed isn't tied to the ones these people are bringing in from Arizona. It's just that there's a certain amount of bottles and cans that get thrown away, that get lost, that get whatever, and it happens. But I can tell you that when they pass the law making the re- deemable amount 10 cents in Michigan, you suddenly started seeing, and you still see them, by the way, people walking along the highways, looking in ditches for cans and bottles. Because some people, despite the fact it's 10 cents out the window when they toss their bottle or can out the window, will still toss the bottle or can out the window. And beyond the 10 cents, it's littering. It's just stupid. But people do that. So I've known and seen Instances of people walking along the freeway or major roads picking up cans and bottles. They're often carrying a garbage bag and they're walking along just picking them up. And so it's doing good there, but these cans and bottles are being bought in Arizona and being returned to California for deposits that were never paid on them. Of course, that's against the law. So I don't know if California has a specific law on this. It sounds like they don't. But Michigan did, and I know that some other states did also passed specific laws that says you cannot bring in quantities of these things from another state. I'm not sure if they actually brought it down to it said if you bring in one, you can go to jail. I doubt that they said that. But I'm assuming if people live near the border there, it would get awfully tempting. But again, it's illegal in Michigan. And here you'll see that they've busted already 93 people who are convicted of it in that 10-year span, assuming those years were inclusive, 2010 to 2019. But here, the family pocketed $7.6 million. And you might say, but Steve, that sounds like an awful lot of bottles and cans. Well, the thing is, if you're familiar with this, and I've seen a little bit about this, is that if you run a business that collects the bottles and cans, right? Like, let's suppose you're Meyer or Walmart or one of these big, big stores. They've got the machines where you feed the bottles and cans into the machines, And then you can hear all kinds of activity behind these machines. And the bottles back there get crushed if they're plastic. And they basically crush them into these cubes that then get sent off for recycling. And so they have to verify how many bottles that they put in that cube and hauled off. And then they apply to the state for the refund because the money gets sent to the state when it gets brought in, and then the state refunds it. I believe that's how it works. And so when it comes to cans, aluminum cans, same thing. So accompanying the articles I read about this story here, you would see these photographs of these big old cubes of plastic or aluminum being pushed around or picked up with forklifts and moved. And if you look at them closely, it's just a monstrous pile of cans or bottles that have been crushed into a cube and then are being sent off. And so somewhere along the line, there is somebody who's got to say, yes, I can vouch for the fact that there are you know, 10,000 bottles or cans represented by that crushed cube right there. So it is a crazy story, but it reminds us of the episode 
of Seinfeld, and here we have life imitating art, except that, of course, Kramer and Newman did not go to jail. So this family hasn't either, by the way. Again, they're just you know, allegations until something else happens. So Charles R. Davis wrote this for Business Insider. A family pocketed $7.6 million by taking cans and bottles from Arizona and recycling them in California, which, according to prosecutors in California, is fraud. There you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Yesterday, I played a blank tape at full blast. The mime next door went nuts.